that, I am certainly willing to do whatever else I have to do to get away with it. And that includes killing your kids as well. We're going to blow Manny's cover whether you help us or not. We'll find someone else to break the story. I don't think so. There's obviously some kind of misunderstanding. I'll do everything I can. You do that, Karen. And when you do, I'll do everything I can to make sure that Michael and Paige get out of Mexico safely. Los norteamericanos, we need to see your passport. You have the gift of making people, especially Gary, but not only Gary, say, poor Val. Poor Val isn't responsible for the way she feels, or the way she acts, or the way she is. You can't blame poor Val because she's poor Val. She can't help being just a little bit crazy. Well, you get enough people saying that, and pretty soon they forget that poor Val takes advantage of their pity. How poor Val's as self-centered as they come. How poor Val needs them to keep saying poor Val because it's her excuse to be a child and it absolves her of her absolute selfishness. Poor Val! I... I don't love Gary. I don't. We didn't get married. We made a business deal. Fine, we made a business deal. But now all business deals are off. If we could get the land back, then we could stop the drilling. It's criminal fraud, Karen. She's facing five to ten years. I don't have much of a career after all that's happened. I feel like there's not much to lose, which means I could be dangerous. Let's not get overly sentimental, shall we? I would have done anything for you. Hello, Paige. You've been behind Murakami from the beginning, and I'm oh, going to prove not it. not now. I'm not in the mood. Your biggest mistake was setting me up. <laughs> I didn't set you up. You were fired because you stole from the company. That has nothing to do with your fantasies about Murakami. For years, you have lied and cheated and conned people, and you've gotten away with it. But I am not going to let you get away with this. You're good. You really are. If I were rating you on the Abby scale. Abby being a 10, you'd be a six, which is very good considering your youth and ignorance. Well, I don't judge things on the Abby scale, and neither does Greg. Don't count on it. Gary, the truth is that I think that it was an attempt at suicide. Let's just drop it, okay? Karen, I know it's tough on you. It's tough on all of us. It's tough on... Paige is sleeping with Michael. You don't think I see what you're doing? What am I doing? Oh, poor Olivia needs her stepfather at home. I am not going to be used to make Gary feel guilty. What's been going on between you and Jill? My relationship with Jill is between the two of us. No, she's in there dying. Now it's between the three of us. She just... Try so hard. Too hard. I don't think I trust her. You don't either. Mama feels exactly the same way. Now, I know you don't trust my premonitions, but I was right about Karen and all that fire, and I know I'm right about that girl. What is with you two? She is young, and she's just overcompensating. She's insecure. You got to give her a chance. Uh-huh. You told me yourself that she hasn't had an easy life, right? She hasn't had an easy life. Uh-huh. I'm off base, right? Yeah, I think you're off base. I would keep both my eyes on her. I'll check in on the twins, okay. not Karen. There's a war going on between the haves and the have-nots. People like you and people like me. Except it's just beginning. It's gonna get a whole lot worse. No, lady. I don't care about you. I already got enough to worry about. What's your problem, Laura? You're the one that's got the problem. Is that right? Laughing and carrying on with that guy like you're on a date. And that bothers you? It makes me sick. You are so simple. You are such a slut. Well, it takes one to know one, doesn't it, dear? I'm trying to do here is get us out of this mess in one piece any way I can. That little creep likes me. 
So if he wants to hold my hand, whisper in my ear, or touch my thigh, fine. Because it might just gain us a second somewhere. It might just give us an opening of some kind. It's not much. It makes my skin crawl. But it's a hell of a lot better than sitting around here all teary-eyed and helpless. To tell you the truth, that makes me sick. artist you are. To have pulled this off and nobody knows. How are we going to feel if we put the fishers through all this trauma only to find out those aren't the babies that Valiant lost? The babies are Val's. Don't be crazy. You're going to kill us. Well, all right, then let me explain it to you once more, all right? I got a phone call. The person on the other end of the line said, is this Mrs. Ewing? I said, yes. They said, well, this may come as a shock to you. But your babies are alive. I didn't know what they were talking about. My children aren't babies, and they're certainly alive. And, and then suddenly it dawned on me. They were talking about Valine. They were talking about Valine's babies. They didn't tell you who they were, give you a name? No, they didn't. And frankly, it didn't occur to me to ask them. They told me where the babies were. I put down the phone, I got in my car, and I started looking for Valine. Why didn't you just call her? Oh, Gary, are you kidding? Call her? <laughs> Would you call her with information like that? You know, you're really unbelievable. I went out and I did what I thought was the right thing, and you're treating me as though I did something wrong. And you interrogate me on top of it. I'm not interrogating Yes, you me. are, and you know what? And it hurts. Well, I, I thought it was Father's Only tonight. Oh, it is, but I'm serving dessert. See, honey? We're just like a real family. Don't worry, honey, we won't be late. Okay. I'd look out for that man of mine if I were you. So now you're going to start giving me advice about men? You've got a good thing going here, Valine. You've got to protect your dream. Laura, you, you hung my jacket up with the wrong trousers. Look at this. I, I mean, there's no point in spending a lot of money on clothes if you're going to treat them like rags. Richard, you're the one that hung them over the back of the chair. Yes, but neatly, along the crease. Did you get my Armani jacket from the cleaners? Gee, no, I didn't. You know, you told me you'd pick it up. I got an important meeting tomorrow. I was counting on wearing that jacket. It's not in there. Hey, hey, look, will you stop it? Hey, just, just stop it. What's yeah. it? I am pro. I'm so sick of you blaming me and using me. I just, I am so tired of taking it and taking it and taking stop. it and taking just it and taking it. I can't stand it anymore. Stop. Then, by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> <laughs> Gladys. Karen. I love you, Mac. Karen, I love you. Come on, you don't belong here anymore. Valine, I trusted you. Valine, how could... You've got to call Gary. You involved him in here accusing her. There's nothing in that story that's not true, and you know it. You're not going back in. Watch me. Get out of her life! Stop them, somebody, please! Stop them! Wise guy, go ahead. What's Mac got to do with Dr. Ackerman? What? I just heard it on the radio. Mac was there, so were you. What the hell's going on? Val's babies are alive. You're handling this pretty well. Your kids may be in there. If it were my kids, sorry. It's okay. Abby, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. What? They told me your babies are alive. I know where they are. Where? 
to the Belmar Hotel. Make sure you get there within a half hour or it'll be too late. Mac McKenzie's Jeep will be parked in front of the hotel. Get in the driver's seat and wait. When you see Gary running toward you, start the engine. He'll get in the Jeep with you. Drive away immediately. Karen, this is Mark St. Clair. I talked to Mac. We started to discuss it. You've obviously failed. Well, I'm, I'm meeting him again tonight and uh, I'm sure I, I can't convince him. Tonight will be too late. You have a half hour. A half hour? No. Listen to me. Listen, you've got to listen to me. Mac will be leaving the Belmar Hotel. There's a bomb planted in Mac's Jeep. What we've meant to each other. But it's not just me. Karen, we belong it's to each other. It's not just the two of us. The damage you've caused to everyone's lives without... Without even... Seeming to care about it. That's not true. Lies you told me are the least of it. I had a reason. I can't live with you anymore. I'm not walking out. Go. You just leave. I don't want you here. I don't want to see you anymore. Valley, I'm so happy to see you. Mama, what are you doing here? I guess your mother's visit here is unexpected, huh? I have a mother, too. Not like mine. Shady Grove, I say. Shady Grove, my little love, I'm bound to go away. If my manager had found out I was a grandmother, it would have been over. What would have been over? Your wonderful career? When did that ever get started? Now, that ain't fair, Valine. It could have been my big break. It almost was. I told you that I was in trouble, Mama. Those old boys were after me. And when you didn't let me in, they caught me and they took my baby. They took her back to Texas, to Gary's folks, and I didn't see her again for 15 years. And when I tried to see her again, I nearly got myself killed. I didn't know. But Mama, I tried to tell you. Someday soon, Mama's going to be doing real good. I'm going to come back a star. Oh. 